Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be discussing medications to help you quit smoking. Smoking is a major cause of cardiovascular disease. Chemicals in cigarette smoke cause the cells that line blood vessels to become swollen and inflamed. This can narrow the blood vessels and can lead to many cardiovascular conditions such as atherosclerosis, coronary heart disease, and stroke. The best thing all smokers can do for their hearts is to quit. Smokers who quit start to improve their heart health and reduce their risk for cardiovascular disease immediately. And within a year, the risk of heart attack drops dramatically, and even people who have already had a heart attack can reduce their risk of having another if they quit smoking. Once you decide to quit, it is important to have support systems and access to resources that can help you through this process. There are support helplines such as smokershelpline.ca, which provides telephone calls to support you or through virtual chats with a coach. You can also let your friends, family, and coworkers know of your plans to stop smoking. It can help for people around you to be aware of what you're going through, especially as you can be grumpy or have difficult mood swings. You may also want to seek out other types of support, such as your family doctor, doctor or your cardiologist, groups of ex-smokers, and Nicotine Anonymous. This organization uses a similar approach to Alcoholics Anonymous, and a sponsor is often available to help you get through urges to smoke. There are also tools that can help you quit, like medicines that reduce the urge to smoke, and nicotine replacement gums, lozenges, patches, and sprays. For many individuals, their journey towards smoking cessation or quitting smoking might be supported with the help of medications. One popular medication is Champix, also known as Varenicline, which unlike nicotine replacement therapies like patches or gums, does not contain any nicotine. Instead, it works by targeting the nicotine receptors in the brain. Now why would we want to do that? Normally, when someone smokes, nicotine enters the body and binds to specific receptors in the brain, leading to the release of dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter, which reinforces the habit of smoking. Varenicline works by partially stimulating these receptors, which provide some relief from cravings and withdrawal symptoms that are usually associated with nicotine dependence. At the same time, it blocks nicotine from fully binding to these receptors. So even if a person were to smoke while they were taking this medication, they won't experience the same satisfaction or reward from smoking. And over time, this helps to reduce the desire to smoke because there's no dopamine involved, so you're not really finding the fun in it anymore. In terms of the impacts this can have on someone when they're taking the medication, it is important to consult your healthcare provider before you start Champix. For example, individuals with a history of severe mental health conditions such as depression or suicidal thoughts may need more careful monitoring when taking this medication. Also, those with severe kidney or liver impairment may not be suitable candidates, and some might have serious skin reactions or allergic reactions when they start the medication if it's not suited for them. There's also another very popular medication we'll discuss which is bupropion, also known by the names Wellbutrin or Zyvan. Some of you may know that this originally developed as an antidepressant but is also quite effective in helping people quit smoking. The exact mechanism and how this works within the brain is not fully understood but it's believed to work by affecting the levels of certain neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine and norepinephrine. So normally within the brain, when your body is done using a certain neurotransmitter, it will reuptake it so that the cell can essentially recycle it and release it when it's time for it to be used again. The way bupropion is assumed to work is by inhibiting the reuptake of this, these neurotransmitters. So it increases their availability in the brain, which can help reduce cravings and withdrawal symptoms that are normally associated with smoking. Additionally, this medication also may have some effect on receptors that are related to nicotine and reduce the rewarding effects of nicotine when it's present in the body. Generally, this medication is very well tolerated, but there are some some adverse effects to consider. For instance, individuals with histories of seizures or epilepsy should use bupropion cautiously as it may lower the seizure threshold. Additionally, people who have recently used or discontinued monoamine oxidase inhibitors and other class of antidepressants should not take bupropion due to the risk of adverse interactions. Similar to Champix as well, anyone with allergies that may pertain to certain ingredients that are involved should consider another medication instead of bupropion. Cytosine is a naturally occurring alkaloid found in various plants, particularly particularly in the seeds of the laburnum anagyroids plants, commonly known as the golden chain tree. It has been used historically as a smoking cessation aid due to its pharmacological similarity to nicotine, the addictive substance found in tobacco. In recent years, cytosine has garnered attention as a potential treatment for nicotine addiction, particularly in regions where it is readily available over the counter and more affordable compared to other smoking cessation medications. However, its efficacy and safety profile compared to other treatments like nicotine replacement therapy or prescription prescription medications like Chantix and Zyban are still under investigation and may vary depending on individual circumstances. So how does cytosine actually work? 
while cytosine exerts its efforts primarily through interaction with nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the brain. These receptors are widely distributed throughout the central nervous system and are involved in various physiological processes, including neurotransmitter release, synaptic transmission, and neuronal excitability. Cytosine typically acts as an agonist at nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, specifically at the alpha-4 beta-2 subtype, which is one of the most abundant subtypes in the brain and is heavily implicated in nicotine addiction. As an agonist, cytosine binds to the receptor and activates it, mimicking the effects of acetylcholine, which is the natural transmitter for these receptors. Upon binding to the alpha-4 beta-2 nicotinic receptors, cytosine triggers a series of events within the neuron. This results in the activation of the receptor, leading to the influx of different ions, which eventually results in the release of neurotransmitters such as dopamine. Now, with the prolonged or repeated exposure to cytosine, the receptors undergo desensitization, meaning they become less and less responsive to further stimulation. The desensitization is believed to contribute to some of the effects we've seen, such as the rewarding effects of nicotine. However, unlike nicotine, which is a full agonist at nicotinic receptors, cytosine acts as a partial agonist. This means that it activates the receptors to a lesser extent compared to nicotine, resulting in the mitigation of withdrawal symptoms and cravings that are associated with nicotine addiction. Now, there's a study conducted in 2011 by West et al., which assessed the efficacy and safety of the cytosine treatment as compared with the placebo. This is considered a single-centered, double-blinded, randomized placebo control trial in which 740 participants were randomly assigned to receive either a placebo or cytosine treatment for 25 days. Participants in both of these groups received a minimal amount of counseling during the study, and the primary outcome being measured was the smoking abstinence for 12 months after the end of treatment. The authors found that the rate of sustained 12-month abstinence was 8.4% in the cytosine group as compared with 2.4% in the placebo group. Evidence indication of the effectiveness of cytosine in comparison to a placebo for smoking cessation. In 2021, Courtney et al. took a more narrowed approach to this question and assessed the effectiveness of cytosine in comparison to Champix or Varenicline on smoking cessation in a RCT. In this study, a total of 1,452 Australian adult adult daily smokers were included, in which about half of them received the cytosine medication over a 25-day course, while the rest received Chantix for 84 days, the standard treatment. The primary outcome this time was to measure the six-month abstinence rate, which was found to be 11.7 and 13.3% for the cytosine and Champix groups respectively. As a result, the cytosine treatment failed to demonstrate non-inferiority regarding smoking cessation. However, there are a number of factors that may have contributed to this. One of these reasons is that the standard dosing and treatment length for cytosine may not be optimal. Further research is definitely required to explore this question, as well as providing additional behavior supports in future studies. Information on drug interactions involving cytosine is limited compared to other smoking cessation medications or treatments. However, some potential interactions are likely associated with other medications that affect nicotinic acetylcholine receptors or neurotransmitter symptoms, especially ones associated with memory, learning, and synaptic plasticity. You might be thinking, but wait, what makes cytosine different from Champix? In Canada, Champix requires a prescription while cytosine can be purchased over the counter. Champix is also more costly than cytosine at $340 for a 12-week regimen compared to only $56 for a 25-day regimen on cytosine. Moreover, a randomized clinical trial from 2021 found that Champix had higher rates of continued abstinence six months after treatment compared to cytosine. However, participants taking cytosine reported less adverse side effects such as nausea and sleep disturbance compared to those taking Champix. Now, let's do a quick recap of the medications we've discussed today. Champix and cytosine work very similarly to each other. They go to the brain and they bind to the nicotine receptors there. This partial stimulation offers some relief from cravings or withdrawal. This also means that nicotine can't fully bind, so the usual feel-good dopamine rush from smoking doesn't come and the desire to smoke dissipates over time. Cytosine is cheaper, over-the-counter, with less negative side effects, but Champix may lead to more sustained abstinence from smoking.